Silicon Angle Media presents The Cube. Covering Alibaba Cloud's annual conference. Brought to you by Intel. Now here's John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle with Yvonne and Akiva. I'm the co-founder based in Silicon Valley in California, Palo Alto, California. And I am here in Hangzhou, China for the Alibaba Cloud Conference in Cloud City. It's the biggest cloud computing conference here in China. And we're excited to be here with Dr. Min Wen Li, who's the chief data scientist and general manager of the big data division at Alibaba Cloud. Dr. Wen Li, thank you for spending the time. Uh, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen a lot of data yeah. in the conversation here at the show. Um, data technology is a big part of this new revolution. It's yes. an industrial revolution that we've never seen before. A whole yeah. other generation of mm -hmm. technology. Right. What does data technology mean to Alibaba? Okay, it means everything. So first off, in terms of technical speaking, it's uh, technology handling massive real-time data and streaming data and also a variety of different variety. For instance, the app, for the mobile app, for system knock, the customer behavior, the clinic, and the, the clinic browsing of the digital image of each merchant, and asking for the price, or compare against another similar product. All these behaviors are translated as a data, and this data will be further merge with the archive data and try to update the profile of this customer, the interest, and then try to detect wh whether there's a good match of the current merchant with the customer intent. If the match is good, and then we will flash this to the top of priority, the top spot, so that try to increase the conversion, conversion rate. So if the conversion rate is high, and then our sales is high. So DT, data technology, means everything to Alibaba. It's interesting, I mm. find my observation here yeah. is so fascinating because in the old days, applications produced data and yes. stored on drives. Right. They go to data warehouses yes. and they analyze it. Right. You guys in Alibaba Cloud are doing something fundamentally different that's exciting in the sense that you have data, people call it data exhaust right. or data in general, yeah. but you're reusing the data yes. as a in the development in real time. So yes. it's not just data exhaust or data from an application. Mm. You're using the data mm. to make a better user experience and make the systems smarter and more intelligent. Did yes. I get that right? Exactly, exactly. This is a positive feedback loop. In a way, so in the old fashioned way, you archive the data for offline analysis, for post event analysis, and then trying to identify whether there's any room for improvement. But that's fine. But now, People cannot wait, and we cannot wait. Offline is not enough. So we have to do this in real time online, in a feedback version, in such a way that we can capture exactly at the same, at the right moment, understand the intent of the customer, and then try to deliver the right content to the customer on the fly. Jackie Mao, Jack Mao, your, yeah. your boss, and also Dr. Wang, who I spoke with mm. yesterday, mm. Um, talk about two things. Jack Ma talks about a new revolution, a new kind of industrial revolution, a smarter a world, a better society. Dr. Wang talks about data flowing like a river, and the, 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 here in Hangzhou as an example. Um, and, but it highlights something that's happening across the world. Right. We're moving from a batch, slow world with data one that's in motion and always real time. Yes. They're not necessarily mutually exclusive, but they're different. Right. A data lake or a data river, or whatever word you want, but I don't really like the word data lake personally. I think it's okay. <laughs> like a uh. batch to me, but right. batch has been around for a while. Right. Real time, you mentioned streaming. Yeah. This is something that's happening and it's impacting the architecture and the value proposition of yes. applications and it's highlighted in Internet of Things. It's highlighted in examples that we're seeing that's exciting, like the ET Brains. Yes. Can you share uh, your view and your project around ET Brains? Because that is not just one vertical. Mm. It's healthcare. It's right. industrial. Right. It's transportation. Yes. It's consumer. It's everything. Yes. Yeah, good question. So first of all, I concur with you that data lake will exist, will continue to exist, because it's got its own value, because 
our ET brain, for example, actually emerge from data lake because it has to learn all the all the benchmark, the baseline model, the basic knowledge from the existing archive data, which is a data lake. However, that's not enough. Once you have the knowledge, you know the capability, you have the capability, but you need to put that in action. So we are talking about data in motion, data in action. So in action, how do we do that? So once you have the training sample, all the training data from data lake, and you train the brain, the brain is mature enough, and then the next step, you want to put the, the brain coupled with the real-time streaming data, and then to generate real-time action in, uh, in real-time manner in preemptive way, rather than post even the reactive way. So, for example, in transportation and travel, T and T, travel and transportation, and the traffic management. So currently, all the authorities, they, ha they have access to real-time information, and then they do a post-event analysis, oh, if there's a traffic jam, and then they want to do some, some mitigation. However, the best scenario is, if you can prevent the traffic jam from happening in the first place, right? How can you foresee there will be, there would be, there could be traffic jam happen in 10 minutes from now, and then you take a preemptive strike and try to prevent that from happening. That's the, that's the goal ET brain in traffic management want to achieve. Like for example, you see the ambulance case. And once we have the ET brain receive the message, say the ambulance is going to go to point A, pick up a patient, and, it, and it carry that patient to rush that into a hospital B. And then it immediately calculates the right routing, the driving direction, and calculate the, the ETA to every intermediate intersection, and then try to coordinate with the traffic lights, traffic signal. All this system, systematic integration will create on-demand green wave for ambulance. But in the past, the ambulance is just by the side round, right? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is fascinating. And mm. also, I'd like to get your thoughts because you bring up something that's important. And that right. is, and I'd like to connect the dots for the audience. And that is, yeah. real time matters. If you're crossing the street, you can't be near real time because you could hit by a car. Right. But also, latency is important. But also, the quality of the data is good. Uh, I was talking to an executive who's laying out his architecture for a smart city, and he said, I want the data in real time. And the IT department said, here it is, it's in real time. And he says, no, but that's last year's data. Mm -hmm. So the data has to be real time, and the latency has to be low. Exactly. I, I completely agree. The latency has to be low. If, uh, unfortunately, in the current IT infrastructure, very often the latency exists. You cannot, you cannot eliminate that, right? And then you have to live with that. So the ET brain, acknowledge the fact. In, in fact, we have our own algorithm designed in a way that it can make a short-term prediction. So based on five minutes ago data, the, five, uh, the data collected five minutes ago, and then it can project the, the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes, what would be the data. And then use that to mitigate or to conquer, to offset the latency. So we found that to be a, a good strategy because it's relatively easy to implement and it's fast, efficient. Dr. Wen Lee, uh, fascinating conversation. I'd like to get your uh, thoughts on connecting that big data conversation or data conversation to this event. Yeah. This is a cloud computing event. Right. We at the Cube and SiliconANGLE and our Wikibon research team, we go to all the events. Yeah. But sometimes the big data events are about big data and do Right. Whatever. And right. then you have cloud talking about DevOps and virtual machines. This conference is not just a siloed topic. Right. You have cloud computing, which is the compute, yeah. it's the energy, it's yeah. the unlimited compute potential. Mm -hmm. But it's also got a lot of data. You guys are blending it in. Exactly. Is that by design and why is that important? Okay, it's by design. Actually, you cannot separate cloud from data, a uh, big data. Or you cannot talk big data without referring to cloud. Because once the data is big, you need a huge computation power. Where does that come from? Cloud computing. So that means the data intelligence, all the value has to require a good technological tool to unleash the value. What's the tool? Cloud computing. For example, 
the first time IBM came up with a smart planet, smart city, that's uh, 2004, uh, 2005 or 2006, around that time. There's no cloud computing yet, uh, at the earliest the emerging stage. And then we see what happens. And the smart city and the gradually become IT infrastructure construction. But it's not DT, data technology. So they invest billions of dollars in the infrastructure level and they collect so much data, but all the data become a burden to the government to save, to archive the data or protect the data from hacking, right? Now these days, if you have the cloud computing available, you can do real-time analytics to unleash the value in the first place, in, at, the, at the first moment you receive the data, and then later on you know which data is more valuable, which data is of less value, and then you know how much you want to archive. Our Wikibon yeah. research team put out research this yeah. past year that said IT is no longer a department, it's, it's everywhere, which it's supports everywhere. your DT, yeah. data technology, it's a fabric. But one thing that's interesting, yeah. going back from 2005 to now, is not only the possibility for unlimited compute, uh, mm. is that now you're seeing wireless technologies yes. significantly exploding in a good way. It's really happening. That's also going to be a, a catalyst for change. Definitely. What's your thoughts on how wireless connects in? Because you have all these networks. You have to move data around. Yes. It has to be addressable. Yes. You have to manage security. Yes. That's a heavy load. Yes. What do you do? How are you guys doing that? Okay, okay, very good question. We faced this challenge a couple of years ago. We realized that because in China, in Chinese domestic market, the users they, they are migrating from PC to mobile. And then they create the mobile phone has a Wi Fi, right? They collect, uh, interact with a lot of AP access point, right? So, and then how do we recognize our tracking and recognize the ID, identification, all this stuff, create a huge headache to us. And this time, uh, in this conference, we announced our solution for mobile, for mobile cloud. So, what does that mean? So, essentially, we have a cloud infrastructure and product designed in order to do a real time integration and do a data cleansing of the data, uh, of the mobile data. I mean, by mobile and the wireless as well. Uh, wireless means uh, even Bluetooth or even IoT, uh, our IoT solution also supported that. So, this is a, this is a, a evolving process in a way. Uh, the first solution probably is, is, is less than perfect. But gradually, as we are branding, uh, expanding into more and more application scenario, and then we will, uh, we will augment, augment the solution and trying to make it more robust. You guys have a good opportunity in Alibaba mm -hmm. Cloud. Certainly, yeah. we met with Karen Liu about the uh, opportunity in North America and the United States where I'm yes. from. Um, but Alibaba Cloud and Alibaba at Root yeah. Namely, Alibaba Cloud has had a great opportunity, almost a green field, almost a clean sheet of paper. But you have a very demanding consumer base here in China. Yes. They're heavily on mobile, as you pointed out, but right. they love applications. Right, right. So the question yeah. I want to ask you is, and I yeah. love the, your thoughts on this, is mm. how do you bring that consumerization velocity, the acceleration of the changing landscape of the consumer yeah. expectation yeah. and their experience yeah. to small businesses and to enterprises? Okay, very good question. So. Use a large customer base and demanding customers in China trying to help us to harden our product, harden our solution, and reduce reduce the cost, the overall cost, and the economy, uh, the the economy of mass scale, economy of scale, and then once we reach that critical point, and then our service is uh, inexpensive enough. And then the small and the media, SMB, small and the media business, they could afford that. And in the old days, the SMB, they want to have access to high performance computing, but they do not have enough budget to afford the supercomputer. But these days now, because our product, our computation product, the cloud product, big data product are, is sufficient, are efficient enough. So the total cost is affordable. And then you see that 80% of our customer of Alibaba, at least 80% are actually SMB. So we believe the same practice can be applied to overseas market as well. You bring the best practices of the consumer and yeah. the scale of Alibaba Cloud to the small medium sized enterprises. Yeah. And they buy as they grow. Exactly. They have to buy a lot up front. Yeah, yeah, they buy on demand. As they need. That's the right. cloud, the benefit of the cloud. Exactly. Okay, the compute is greatness, you got greatness with the, uh, the, 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 the the compute power right. is going to create a renaissance of big data applications where you see that. Yes. 
what is your relationship with Intel and the ecosystem? Because we see you guys have the same playbook as a lot of successful companies in this open source era yeah. of you need horsepower and you need open source. Yes. What is Alibaba's strategy around uh, the ecosystem, relationship with Intel, and how are you guys going to do with partners? Yeah, first of all, so, uh, we're really happy that we have Intel as our partner in the most recent uh, uh, big data hackathon. For the for the medical for the medical AI competition, and we just closed that uh, that, that 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 competition that that data hackathon. Okay, very 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 fascinating event. Okay, Intel provided a lot of, a lot of support. All the customer all all the all the participants of this data hackathon, they do their computing leveraging on the Intel's product because they do the image process, okay? And then we provided the overall computing platform. Okay, this is a perfect example of how we collaborate with our partners, technolo technology partners. Okay, uh, uh, beyond Intel, actually we, in terms of the ecosystem, first of all, we are open. We are building our ecosystem. We need partners. We need partners from pure technology perspective, and we also need partners from the traditional vertical sectors as well, because they provide us domain know-how. Once we couple our cloud computing and big data technology with the domain know-how, the subject, uh, subject matter expert expertise, will together the marriage will generate a huge value. <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. And yeah. believe me, open source is going to grow exponentially. Yeah. And by 2025, we predict that it's going to look like hockey stick um, uh, from the Linux Foundation doing amazing work, seeing the Cloud Data Foundation. I want to get your thoughts on um, the future generation. Yeah, you mean um, open source? The um, future generation is using open source. But yeah. They're younger. You guys attract younger yeah. demographics in your employee base. Yeah. You have a cloud native developer now emerging. Right. They want to program the infrastructure as code. Yeah. They want to just. They don't want to provision servers. They want the street lights to just work. Exactly. Whatever the project, the brains have to be in the infrastructure. Right. right but they right. want to be creative. Yes. You bring yes. in two cultures together. Right. And you got AI. It's a, a wonderful trend. Machine learning is, right. is doing very well. Right. How do you guys train the younger generation? What's your advice to people looking at Alibaba Cloud that want to play with all the good toys? Yes. You got machine learning, you got right. AI. Right. They don't want to necessarily maybe. Yes. They don't want to program you. They right. They don't want to configure switches. Right, right. Yeah, very good question. Actually, this is related to our product strategy. So in a way, so like today we announced our ET brain. So we are going to release this and share this as a platform to let the, all the creative mind, creative brains, okay, people trying to leverage on this brain and then do the, do the, do the creative job rather than worry about the underlying, the infrastructure, the basic stuff. So this is the part which we want to share with the young generation, tell them that unleash your creativity, unleash your imagination, don't worry about the hard-coded part. And we already built the infrastructure, the backbone for you. And then imagine anything you think possible and then try to use the ET brain, try to explore that. And we provide the necessary tool and the building blocks. And the APIs. And the APIs as well, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay, so I want to get your thoughts on yeah. something important to our audience, and that is uh, machine learning. It's yeah. The gateway to AI. AI, yeah. what is AI? AI software. Right. Using cloud. Some will argue that AI hasn't really yet come on the scene, but it's coming. Yeah. And we love AI, but machine learning is where the, where the action is right now. Yes. Um, and they want to learn about how to get involved with machine learning. So what's your view on the role of machine learning? Because now you have the opportunity for a new kind of software development. There's a lot of math involved. Right. That's something that you know a lot about. Yeah. So is there going to be more libraries? What's your vision on how machine learning moves from a bounded use case yeah. to more unbounded opportunities? Because if I'm a developer, yeah. I want the horizontally scalable resource of the cloud, yes. but I'm going to have domain expertise in a vertical application. Yes. So I need to have a little bit of specialism. Right. And I want the scalability. So yeah. data's got to move this way and it's got to be up this way. Yes, yeah. Okay, let me put it this way. Mm. So, first of all, if, for the young generation or for people who are really interested in AI or they, wo they want to work on AI, my recommendation, first of all, you're you going to learn some mathematics. Why? Because all the AIs or machine learnings, learnings is talking about algorithms. And all the algorithms actually is all about math. 
mathematics, the formula, and also the optimization, how to speed up the, the convergence of the, of the algorithms, right? So all this math is important, okay? And then if you have that math background, and then you have the capability to judge or to select which algorithm or which machine software is suitable to solve the vertical problems. Very often the most popular algorithm may not be the right one to solve the specific vertical problems. So you're gonna have the way capability to differentiate, to see that, make the right choice. Okay, this is the first recommendation. And the second recommendation, try to do as many toy examples as possible. Try to get your hands on. Not a, don't stop at looking at the function specification and oh this is a function input output da, da, da. but you need you need to get your hands dirty yeah. get uh, your hands on the real problem the real data so that you can have a feeling about how powerful it is or how how bad or how good it is once you have this kind of experience and then you do have a capability you gradually build up accumulate the capability to make the right choices this is fascinating dr mm. this is fantastic I want to follow up on that because you're bringing up, in my mind, I can almost see the, all these tools. Yeah. It's an artisan culture coming on. Yeah. You're seeing that. Yeah. Dr. Wong discussed that with me yesterday. Yeah. Artisans meeting technologists, scientists, and creatives. Yeah. UI, we're seeing evolutions in user experience. That's yes. more art. Right. right? So culture is important. But for the machine learners out there, the algorithmists, sometimes you have to have a lot of tools. Right. But if you have one tool, you, don't, you shouldn't try to use tools for other jobs. So mm -hmm. you bring this up. How should a company who's architecting their, their, their business or mm -hmm. their application mm -hmm. look at tooling? Because on one hand, there's the right tool for the right job, but you don't want to use a tool for a job that's not designed for, mm -hmm. to your point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tools, what's your advice and philosophy on the kinds of toolings and when to engage platforms relationship between platforms and tools. Okay, let me push it this way. So this is a decision based on a mixture of different criteria together. So first of all, from technology perspective, and the second is from the business perspective, okay? From technology perspective, I would say, if you are in a, uh, if, if, if your company's uh, critical competence is technical stuff, and then you, you gotta have your own tool, your own version. If you only rely on some existing tool from other companies, and then your whole business actually is rely dependent on that, and this is the weakest link, the most dangerous link, right? So, but however, very often, to develop your own version of the tool takes forever, and market wouldn't give you so much time, right? And then you need to strike a balance. How much? How much? I want to get involved for self-development and how much for in-house development and how much I want to buy in. And time. And time as well, yes. So, and another one is that you got to look at the competitive landscape. If this tool actually has already existed for many years and it has many similar products in the market, and the problem is not a good idea to reproduce or reinvent. And then you got to why not buy it? You take that for granted and then take that as a fact. And then you build a new fact, right? So this is another mature, in terms of a maturity of the tool. And then you need to strike a balance. And in the end, in the extreme case, if your business, your company is doing an extremely new, innovative, first of a kind study or, or business or, or, or service, you probably need some differentiate. And that differentiated problem is a new tool. Final question for yes. you. Uh, for the audience in, in America, in mm. Silicon Valley, what's, what, what would you like to share from your own personal perspective about Alibaba Cloud that they should know about? Uh, okay. and, or they might not know about and should know about? Okay, uh, so for, because I, I, I work at the US for 16 years. Uh, to be frank, uh, to be frank uh, I know nothing. I knew nothing about Alibaba until I came back. So as a Chinese overseas, I had a, I'm so ignorant uh, about Alibaba until I came back. So I can, I can predict or I can guess more or less in the overseas market, in the U.S. customers, they probably know not that much about Alibaba or Alibaba Cloud. So my advice and from my personal experience, I say first of all, Alibaba is a global company. And Alibaba Cloud is a global company. We are going to go global. 
is not only a China, a Chinese company. Okay, so first of all, we are going to serve customers over, over overseas market in entire world, Europe and, and North America and Southeast Asia. Okay, so we want to go global first. And second, we are not only doing the cloud, we are doing a blending of a cloud and big data and vertical solutions. I call this a VIP. V for vertical, I for innovation, P for product. So VIP is our strategy. Use the, and the VIP, the innovation is based upon our cloud product and the big data product. And data is at the center of it. Data is the center of this. And we already got our data technique, our data practice from our own business, which is the e-commerce. And right? you solve some hard problems, the ET brains. Yes. It's a great playground of yes. AI opportunity. Yes. You must be super excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. right, right. right. <laughs> you having fun? Okay. Yes, a lot of fun. A very rewarding experience. A lot of dreams really come true. Well, certainly yeah. when you come to Silicon Valley, I know you have a San Mateo office. We're in Palo Alto. San Mateo, Alto. right, uh, right. This is uh, the yeah. Cube coverage mm -hmm. of Alibaba Cloud. Mm -hmm. I'm John Furrier, co-founder of SiliconANGLE, Wikibon Research, and the Cube here in China covering the Alibaba Cloud with Dr. Wan Lee. Thanks for watching.